it's really easy to overlook restaurants like The Palm in New York City, simply because it's been there forever. And there's so many great new restaurants that open around town all the time. But you know what? That's a mistake. I made that mistake. I hadn't been to The Palm ever. Eating at new restaurants, that's my thing. Checking out my favorites, that's what I do. Until one day I stumbled in with some friends and I was astonished. The food was great and then I realized this place is classic. The interior is classic, it's one of the oldest steakhouses in America. Service is great and it's run by the same two families that opened it generations ago, the Botsies and the Gansies. Stay tuned and we'll get the story. This is the original Palm we're at. It's on the west side of 2nd Avenue, which you head north. And now they've got 30-some franchises around the country. I shouldn't say franchises. They own them all. So the restaurant's kind of ubiquitous. But again, it's a classic. Let's go inside, take a look, and meet the owners. Most of the people who originally worked in this restaurant, including my grandfather, Mr. Gansey, came from small villages outside the city of Parma. Uh, which is, you know, no, known for cheese and opera and everything. So when they came here and uh, bought this one store, it was just this one little store, was, and they wanted to name it Padma after where they came from. Mm. So in filling out the papers that were required at the time, uh, they spoke almost no English, and uh, obviously the person spoke no Italian. When asked what the name of the restaurant's going to be, they said Parma, and, 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 and the person Running it down, must have said something. Would you say palm, palm, palm? And they said yes, and they said okay, and they wrote palm down. I guess being so, it, it, especially, I think immigrants, immigrants in those days were so concerned. They saw it written down palm. They said that's it. We have to call it palm, otherwise they're going to probably send us back on a boat or something like that. <laughs> so they call it the palm, and it's been the palm for 80 years, and it's a true story. <laughs> So what's with all these cartoons over the walls? This has become kind of a shtick in all the palms in every city they open, but this one, this one's the original one. And how it happened was this neighborhood had been Steakhouse Row for years. And a lot of the newspapers, back in the day when New York had a lot of newspapers, had their offices nearby. And a lot of the guys would run up bills, sometimes they couldn't pay the bills, so they made a deal. I'll put some artwork on the wall, boss, and you know, give me, give me a break on my bill. And that's how it started. There's great original artwork up and down on the second floor, the first floor, the hall ways, new Marvel comic stuff, classic old stuff. Yeah, this is the real deal. The mirror was down the, down the block, uh, the news is still there. And somehow, the first outside group, outside the neighborhood group clientele were newspaper people. They started coming in here, and that's, that's, the, uh, 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 that's the reason why we have these cartoons. Uh, many times, uh, they would have a couple of drinks too much, they'd say, can I put something on the wall? Or they couldn't pay for their meal, and they were short. Uh, my grandfather, Mr. Gans, would say, I put something on the wall, don't worry about it. And they would ask for a steak. And there was, right across the street, there was a butcher store called Baldo's, and he stayed there, he was there for years. They said, okay, fine. They'd run across the street, get a couple of steaks, come back and throw it on the fire. Next thing you know, they're having, getting, getting a reputation for serving great steaks. And they took it to the next level and became as a, a, known as a steak, steak, the place where you go get good steaks and lamb chops, and uh, along with the Italian flavored dishes, which we still have to this day. And I think that makes us a little unique among yeah. all our competitors. We, yeah. we do those things in the other, you know, pretty well, as a matter of fact. But that, again, you know, like the name was mistake, uh, steakhouse <laughs> yeah, was right. almost uh, by accident. Right. Yeah. So for all the planning we do in life, That's right. is, it That's has right. its way with us. That's right. <laughs> well, it's a steakhouse. We gotta look at the walk-in box because I'm a steak freak and I wanna see if it's really dry aged and if it's really prime. And guess what? It's both. This scores on both accounts. The restaurant's got great, great meat. Let's step in the box and take a look. Well, you know I do this in every restaurant. I go in the walk-in box. I, you know, I don't believe everybody all the time. I want to see with my own eyes what they're cooking. Well, you, we talked about it a million times on my show. What's prime? Show me the money, baby. See that marble? You're only going to get that. In, yeah, well, I mean, even this night. It's, it's gorgeous. This is not choice meat. This is a ribeye. Bone in. A little bit of deckle meat on the top. There's the eye. Marble all the way through. You got this one here. They talk about aging. So how do you notice meat's age? See this color down here? This is the underside. This is where the feather bones would have been. Bone here, you peel this off, cut the nerve out, your bones are under you. Anytime you got that kind of color, that's dry aging. That's why you've got to peel that off. And it's got that funky smell, man. It's got Excellent. a little of that dry aged stuff. And again, this is not a huge loin, relatively a kind of an average size strip, but this is right from the center cut. There's no nerve end and just gorgeous, gorgeous marble all the way through. 
But what we do Let's have... meet Chef Tony. He's a classic. He was a kid from Hell's Kitchen washing pots. Back then, all the cooks were Italian. All the waitstaff was Italian. He barely spoke Italian. But you know what? He worked his way up, became a cook, a prep cook, a chef, and now he's the executive chef for the entire chain. When I started in 1964, I was the first American in the kitchen. I was Italian, but American-Italian. Everybody else came from Europe. And they kind of liked me because I was a fast learner and they took me under their wing and uh, I moved up the ladder kind of quickly. So you were learning at the apron strings of these old masters? Absolutely, absolutely. And I learned uh, the right way, no shortcuts, you know, do everything from scratch. That kind of schooling, you couldn't, you couldn't put a price on it right now. You couldn't, you couldn't get it. There's a lot of ways to do lobster. I mean, you got the Thomas Keller version where you poach it slowly in butter. You got other versions, you Sandrins with vanilla. You got people that are delicate. You know, here at the Palm, they just get these monster lobsters starting at three pounds, steam them, split them in half, and then throw them on that grill. And I'll tell you what, <laughs> they kind of beat them up, but they taste great. I, I, I don't know what it is. These big lobsters, you dip them in butter, and they're addictive. We buy 80% of the three, four, five, six pound lobsters in the country. We buy it. All right, we're here, we're, you know, we're here at the Palm. We eat, we gotta eat, right? So I asked for a little lobster. Find me a small one, a little one, small one. And uh, this was it, they chopped it up. Maybe it's supposed to look small when it's chopped up. This is not a small lobster, but digging into the tail here. Got the tail meat out. Oh, don't be drooling, don't be drooling. And you dip the tail in a little butter. All right. It's really good, in spite of the fact that it's been, you know, hard-boiled, thrown on that grill. You're thinking, that can't be good? Well, come here. It's sweet. It's crustacean. And the butter is just, this is, there's something nutty about lobsters and butter. I and mean, what do you think Keller poaches his in whole butter? Because there is something magical about this. And this is just our first course. This is the appetizer. We're moving on after this to um, some salads and some steaks and some veal dishes. But 80th anniversary, Palm Restaurant in New York. Proof from the pudding. This is why. You've got to come out here, folks. Now we're going to let the chef do a demo. This is the classic way to make a veal dish. Pounded, breaded, sautéed to order. Old school. This is the way to go, folks. You can do this at home. Okay, over here we're cooking a veal martini that was actually made up by a corporate chef, Tony Tamaro. And he basically came up with the idea with some different types of mushrooms and tomato, but a little bit of Marsala wine sauce. We're going to go ahead and cook our veal scallopini that was breaded with a little bit of flour. This is actually two orders. Okay, so we just want to get a little bit of color on them. Okay, if you get color on both sides, we're actually going to take these out because we don't want to overcook the veal. At this point, they're 99% done. They're going to carry over. They're basically there. You got it. You got it. So I'm going to go ahead and take a little bit of this oil out. I'm going to go ahead and add my sun-dried tomato, shiitake mushroom, some sliced mushrooms, and some shallot. Saute that up a second. So I just got a little bit of color. My, my vegetables are bleeding a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and degrade with some masala wine, creating the fond, of course. A little bit of salt, a little bit of white pepper. Veal stock? We're just going to add a little bit of veal stock, that's correct. We're just going to cook this down for about three minutes. I'm going to go ahead and put my veal back in. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and toss the veal. I'm going to add my Florida chopped tomatoes. I'm going to add my julienne of basil. A touch of parsley. And just a little bit of butter. Well, that's a little for restaurant standards. And the butter is going to help thicken the sauce, bind it, give yeah, it a little mouthfeel. Absolutely. It'll, it'll really kind of refine the sauce, smooth it out, blend all those flavors together. Bring that butter down a little bit. Again, a little palm parsley. And there you have it, veal martini. I think we do stand apart from our competitors because we do, so, do have an Italian flair to our menu. 
uh, that other restaurants don't have. We serve wonderful veal dishes, uh, uh, chicken, uh, uh, fish, uh, uh, almost anything you can th think of. We have in the house, we'll make it for you if, if, if we can. Which really goes back to your roots because exactly. the original guys cooked exactly. in the kitchen. That's how they cook, yes. Yeah. So immigrants, that, everything. Yeah. That's right. And that's what they were eating and that's what they cooked. Absolutely right. Wow. We're digging in. We're digging in. So this is the, um, what I, this is the veal, veal parmesan. Small, you know, small portion. It's designer food. They specialize in small portions here. If this ends up, if this ends up on my freaking on sale Ralph Lauren knit, I'm gonna just freak. Hold on. I'm leaning over. It's great. I haven't, I haven't even bit it twice. It's great. Sweet, tomatoey, acidic, tender, cheesy, tender as can be. I'm done talking. I'm eating. I'm done. Shut the cameras off. I'm done eating. This is it. No more talking. We're eating. We're into this thing. This is this is really this is actually really really good. I've had people tell me this was good. I've never ordered. I always get steak here, but this is like butter. The tomatoes are great. Until next time. Meet me in my kitchen. We'll do something in my kitchen. I don't know what, but we'll do something. Maybe something like this. <sighs> we'll see. Hey, the Palm. You know what? I didn't know what to think. I hadn't been there in like years and years and years and years and years. Because there's so many new restaurants and there's so many other steakhouses. And I just, everyone says, oh, the place is overrated. Really, that's what everybody says. Nah, the Palm, best days are behind it. And I believe them. But I went in one day, snuck in, ate there, and I'm like, pfft. This is good food. And then I went back and I ate again. And besides the steaks, which are really, really great, of course, because it is a steakhouse, the Italian stuff was wonderful. You know, the tomato sauce is great, and the chicken and veal parm and all that stuff's fantastic. The lobsters, forget about it. I mean, I don't know how they do it, that they come out tasting fantastic. The place is a class act, and I love the story of the Bozzi family and the Ganzi family. And very recently, Dad, who we interviewed, passed along the reins to his son. So now it's like, I don't know, ninth generation, fourth generation, I don't know, but it's a long time in one family. And it's a class act. They do everything the right way. Now that I've been able to hang out in the kitchen, I'm just stunned. They do it from scratch, they do it the right way, bread things to order, fry them to order. So what am I going to make? I'm going to make chicken parmesan at home because it's just so simple and people ask how to make simple things. And it's simple and you should make this stuff at home because it's delicious. And it's exactly the way they do it there because there's only really one way to do this. You know, plus or minus what kind of cheese you're going to put on the top. He starts with great Italian San Marzano tomatoes. All the palm restaurants they have, they're still using Italian San Marzanos. I'm not using San Marzano, forgive me, but this is a great tomato I found on the store. It's an Italian organic from Napoli, so Napolitano. So a little, you know, a few miles away from traditional San Marzano growing region. But this will be a great tomato. So you're going to make a great simple tomato sauce. Just garlic, onions, fresh basil, tomatoes. That's all it needs. Doesn't have to cook for long. Perfect. Maybe a drop of tomato paste. Um, I got some nice organic chicken breasts, boneless, skinless. We're going to, you know, just one of these. We're going to butterfly it a little bit. We're going to pound it thin. We're going to season it with salt and pepper. Then here's the key for me for making a great Parmesan is you go traditional standard breading procedure. Flour, egg wash, breadcrumbs. But I have cheese in my egg wash and I have cheese and fresh basil in my breadcrumbs. So twice along the way I'm coating this chicken, enrobing it in grated Romano cheese. So that's going to have this great base plus the basil. That's guaranteed. Fried, delicious. Top of that I got some fresh mozzarella. I think he was using, was it Gruyere? Do you remember? Munster. He was using Munster, which is a brilliant idea because it doesn't get so rubbery on the way out to the dining room, but nothing's going out to the dining room here. It goes from here to there and I eat it. So I got some big hunk of cheese I got at Citarella, beautiful, you know, fresh mozzarella from New York, Leone, I think. Um, so let's start with the tomato sauce. Tomato sauce, you know, we make this a million times. Garlic, onions, some fresh basil, boom. I mean, this is, you could make this in your sleep. It takes no time at all. And I'll throw a little tomato paste in. I'm curious to see what these tomatoes look like, actually. I never saw this brand before. I was in the store and I said, Italian organic from Naples? Pooh, please. And I mean, I like a lot of garlic in my tomato sauce. If you don't like garlic, don't use it. But I'm going to use five or six cloves because, you know, I want a real, I want it garlicky, period. That's 28 ounces of tomato, so it can handle the garlic. Bingo, onion.
All righty. What are we starting with? Well, you tell me with that color. Some extra virgin olive oil. This is the onions and garlic mixed into the olive oil. We're just going to saute those out. All right, I'm going to add early on. I just love to put the basil in early. It's releases. You can smell it. It's really nice and aromatic in that oil. Smells good already, folks. Little tomato paste, just to add a little body. I mean, all tomato paste is, is reduced concentrated tomato juice. Basically, tomato product. So it's gives this a little more depth. If you know, if you like a lighter style tomato sauce, don't never put tomato paste in it. For years, I made tomato sauce without tomato paste. And obviously, if you're using fresh tomatoes, which is with the sauce I love the most, I'm not putting any paste in that. So just let that paste cook out a bit now. We're breaking it up so it's not in big clumps. That's why I like to put it in now, is to just so it's not going to end up. Once, once that sauce is in there, it's, tomato paste could be, end up in a big clump in the middle somewhere. This way, no. I've spread it out. It's dissolving. And when I add the tomato, it's going to just give it a little extra sheen. All right, that looks good to me. Now we'll add these guys. And I'm just going to right now break them by hand, just crush them so that they release the juice. This is beautiful. Nice tomato sauce. It'll sit right underneath the chicken. And when this is ready, it's going to be reduced down. It's perfect. Let's do the chicken. All right, like I said, I'm going to have, um, hold on. We're only going to do one breast, so I'm not going to make a lot. I've got these beautiful eggs that my local farmer gets me. Organic, wonderful, free range, right down the street in Cape May Point. We're just going to beat this up a little. Look at that color of that yolk, would you? And you can thin it out if you want with a little milk or a little buttermilk. I'm putting some cheese in here. I'm also going to put a little bit of basil in here. Again, just smish that around. This is just regular dried plain breadcrumbs. I don't like to use the ones with the, the ones they call seasoned because they're seasoned with a lot of things I don't like, like dried oregano. So here I got some Romano cheese in there. And we'll put in another little handful of basil chiffonade, because this way I know I've got it on the outside. So now I, the only thing that isn't seasoned is the flour. You'll see. Everything else has plenty of seasoning, which is good. All right, chicken. Chicken breast, boneless already. We're just going to butterfly it with a knife. That's why I'm trying to get it so it's all one thickness. And then, using a really expensive piece of equipment, that I buy, I custom order these. They come from a little place in Naples, just outside of Naples. I use this Napolitan bag and I give it a whack. And all I'm doing here is getting it the same thickness. Just make sure when you use these bags, there's nothing inside of them, you know? No pieces of paper, no receipts, <laughs> no odds and ends. All right, that's the chicken breast. I don't want it any thinner because to me, too thin, it dries out. And you just continue. If you've got three or four breasts, whatever, pork, I do the same thing. Veal, I do the same thing. Or you can use plastic. If that makes you, bothers you, then just get plastic wrap, you know, plastic saran wrap, but on both sides, and then poop, 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 and it's perfect. So, we'll put it here, but I'm going to season this with salt and a little pepper. And we're going to turn it over so it's nicely coated. And the reason we do this is because the flour gives the egg wash something to hold on to. A lot of people don't bread like this, but this is really the best way to do it because the flour just gives enough texture that the eggs grab it. Fully coated, eggs picked up. Look at the color of that egg. These organic eggs are beautiful. All right, here we go right in here. Bingo. All right. Like that. We'll turn it. Hey, okay, cooperate. We're supposed to fold like that. 
You can see all that basil on the outside. That's going to taste delicious when it's fried. Deep fat frying. I want this oil to be around 350, maybe even 375. So I think a lot of mistakes people make at home when they fry food. This isn't deep fat. This is pan frying, but same idea. I want <clears throat> oil's got to be hot. If the oil's not hot enough, you get really greasy finished product because it sits too long, like a sponge. And remember when you're putting the chicken in the pan, put it in away from you. Give that pan a shake. Beautiful. Now be careful. You, oh, the edge is always brown before the middle, so don't panic here. That's good. That's nice. Golden. And I like to shake the pan a little bit if I can, because this way I know I'm getting the oil's also cooking across the top here. All right. I'll hold it above the pan. And be careful with the tongs. I don't want to rip this because I talked about how hard we worked. You can see, when I was talking about that skin, there's no cracks in that. There's no place, so the breading seals it. It's really almost like steaming it on the inside. Oil, but see, there's so little oil. I mean, that's, when you fry quickly and you fry well, people think it's greasy. It's not greasy. There's not that much oil in the finished product. All right, cheese. All right, put you right here on a plate. Pop it in the oven for a minute to melt the cheese. We got our tomato sauce, which looks beautiful. Hey, honey, where's the pasta? There is no pasta. This is chicken parm. This is how we do it, all right? You want pasta? That's a different dish. We're just going to spread this around. We don't need a ton. I don't want it swimming. It's probably enough right there. It's got a beautiful color. And we'll get this parm. And we'll just lay it on there. Oh, baby. Come on. What's not to like? Huh? It smells great. I mean, I'm, this is, you know, truth in menu. This just, ouch. That's hot. That was hot, actually. That little pan was hot. <laughs> yeah! We got burned. Not really. We were, almost got burned. Anyway. Hold on. All right. All right. Dive in. You know, he's, he walks in on these shows and eats. Sorry, dive in. It's going to be hot. Don't burn yourself and sue me now. Take a cheesy bite. A little sauce on there. Chicken's beautiful, tender. Blow on that little bit. It's going to be hot. Everything's out of the oven. The comments of a 16-year-old. You know, 10th grade. Knows everything, basically. This age, everything. I wasn't. Oh, come on. You say that every time. New line. It's good. Admit it. It's good. Admit it. It's tasty. Oh, this is your kind of food. I'm not asking you to do foie gras, souffles, or, yeah. you know, rigatoni of clams. This is, this is tasty, no? It, I'll, I'll give it like 8 out of 10. Oh, this is good. I'm going to have a bite. Heck with 8 out of 10. This is great, simple. I mean, you can't go wrong. And this is, I mean, the one good thing in my house is if I want everybody to eat, I make this kind of food. Who doesn't like this? I mean, healthy? Yeah, it's not that. If you, again, if you fry well, it's not bad. Mm. I love this stuff. I love it. I know I made it. Fresh basil, cheese. For me, it makes a huge difference. Don't talk with food in your mouth. Um, anyway, got to love those guys at the Palm. Got to love them. That, that maitre d', Albino. Guy's about this big. He's a class guy. Absolute class guy. My waiter, um, what the heck was his name? Love the guy. I mean, I love everybody. You got these waiters that have been there for like 25, 30 years. Bruno, that's the guy I had. Bruno. What's the guy's, the guy's like 70. He wants to retire, meaning he wants to work there three days a week for the rest of his life. The whole staff's like that. Once you're in there a couple of times, I can't attest to all the Palm locations. I can't. They've got a bunch of them. I'm sure they're all great. I was at the one in Philly a while back. It was wonderful. But Palm, New York, folks, don't overlook that place. Everyone says, no, it's not as good. Baloney. The Palm is great. The one across the street's great. Have them in the Times Square, but I'll check it out. But the guys are great. You go there. They feel like family. It's like one of those old school restaurants. It's like what New York used to be. Waiters know you. You sit down. They take care of you. Civilized. You know, it's not Applebee's, man. It's the Palm. It's New York. So get there. Get there and you'll see what you've been missing all along, listening to your friends. Till next time, eat well. Ciao. Got something? Finish it out, man. <laughs> <laughs> Here he is again. It's like the hot dog show. Hey. All right. Be good. Till next time. Kirk, this is good, man. You eat this.